lounging, son. Like when we first started going out, like he fucking, I, if I sat next to her on the couch, he'd be like fucking barking. <laughs> like, I'm like, do you need to learn your place? Get off the fucking couch, go to the floor. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. And I'm Manny. And today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite books that came out this week, which, by the way, was a fantastic week of new comic books. We we're oh boy, was it? Yes, yeah. There's a couple episodes on the channel, um, that that are going to be coming out this week, going through some of them. But this one, um, I've been excited for for a while. Batman Dark Age, Mark Russell, Mike Allred, and Laura Allred. And before we get into this. I just want to remind everybody, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Check out some of the dope content we have on the channel, including an interview with Mike Allred that's in the interviews playlist. So go check that out. And um, yeah, hit that subscribe button. Now let's talk this awesome comic. So this is a spiritual successor. It's not like a or a spiritual sequel. It's not a direct sequel to Superman Space Age that the same creative team did, which was fantastic, by the way. I think I don't think we've talked about on the channel but that'd be a great episode to go yeah I'd, I'd have to pick that one up because i don't i don't have that one yeah i think the i'm soft, definitely down the soft cover is coming out soon so uh maybe All when right, that cool. comes out we can we can discuss but you know it's told as if the heroes existed not from their inception original inception but it starts at like if they came out in the 60s basically right. you know i i love it i love these kind of stories you know it's it's interesting that this isn't marked a uh, black label at all, which you would think maybe it is because it's out of continuity story. I love it. And I think it's uh, an interesting concept. I think Mark Russell's done it with, um, you know, the Fantastic Four life story. Chips at RC did it with Spider-Man life story. So it's a concept that's been done, but I love this spin and this opening. I can't think of a more Mike Allred page, dude, with all this like space buildings and futuristic technology you got this cat this cow right here estimated output 6.2 gallons so they got like this thing that yeah, I, I love the opening and that that opening uh splash image there i mean you know it's not really a splash page but it takes up like three quarters of it yeah. it's amazing man you know what i mean like so much so many lines intersecting but every you, you got that crisp at, you know alred like line work that just yeah. has that pop art feel to it yeah. It's a great way to to sort of suck you in right away, man. And yeah, it says welcome you to the Gotham of tomorrow. So we are now in the we're in the future. It's not we're not you know we're it's gonna jump around. And then obviously this moment right here is also not in the the scene we were just in, right? Like we're seeing this right. version of Batman, which I really dig. Got you know just a few differences. We got him fighting this like faceless society. You see like. Uh, kind of run down Gotham and there's the textures on the buildings are great first of all the coloring Laura Allred is definitely in my top three favorite colors it's and, and yeah, man, when she's I up say there. top three they're all basically the, at the same level for me it's not like there's a one two and three it's like those three are evenly uh tied and again, you know, we're seeing this contrast, right? We're seeing these like futuristic buildings. You know, it even like mentions how if you want to move across town, just take your house with you. Thanks to Gotham's modular housing, you can live in any neighborhood you choose. Affordability with like I can just like picture this like infomercial talking yeah. about like moving to Gotham City, which is it's very cool. Epcot Center, you know, like and and I love that it's still like like um kind of rooted in in Alred's like uh like Silver Age kind of like like vibe. Because mm -hmm. it's sort of like a, a retro look at what the future would be like. Oh, yeah. I dig it. That's a, you know, that's a perfect um, ex, um, description of his futuristic, like, uh, buildings and stuff. Because that is exactly what it feels like. Great writing by Mark Russell, too. You he's know, great, like, dude. he's like, the, I haven't, I've always wanted to read his Flintstones comic. And I, because I've heard nothing but amazing things. I really have to pick that up. That would definitely be something I would love to talk about on the channel because people... Hey, man, if you want to do it, I'll, I'll pick it up too. Yeah, okay, let's do it. But yeah, his writing is fantastic. And I think that, you know, obviously these two creators have a great rapport and, you know, teaming up on the Superman book and then wanting to come back and do a Batman book. I think it's great. I think that they work very well together. I love this right here. The two panels where Batman's looking down and then... All of a sudden, the train out of nowhere and just Whomp. knocks this dude up. And again, I love you know, Alred's Batman. Oh, it's fantastic. I love the way he does the ears because it yes. looks like an actual bat ear. 
they're not like like horns or anything like they they do they're like you know they're shaped like ears they're kind of flat like ears are you know like it mm -hmm. it, it definitely like gives them a very unique look that i think is uh hasn't really been done before i've never seen a batman's towel drawn this way no and then we're still in the future of gotham and then this this is this is so fucking dope so we see like the movement of here and the only thing i'm confused about is because I feel like we're in the future here in this moment, right? The building, like, if this is supposed to be Batman, we come here and we see an older Bruce Wayne. At, I love it. At Wayne Manors. So his yeah. man, his man just become an old age home. That's, that's fucking great, dude. And then look, I love this. You know, it's like, kind of reminds me of like Tony Stark and Howard Stark. You know, like, especially from the Iron Man movies where like he's got the... What is it? The world, the world fair, right? Where they they have all this like futuristic stuff and and their yes like future model. So I th I think this is awesome, dude. So he's watching this Gotham's Gotham World's Fair, nineteen fifty six, and he doesn't have his like memory. So he's like, <laughs> take me away, Alfred. And he's like, dude, Alfred died forty years ago, Mister Wayne. You know, <laughs> it's just so fucking like that's the kind of humor. It's like. I don't want to say it's a dry humor, but it's just like the the way he writes it. It's hard to make you laugh when you read a comic book, in my opinion. You know? Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And I think Kyle Starks does a great job. I think we talked about that with like Peacemaker, which was hilarious. Yes. And then we see that there's a counselor and it's Dr. Grayson. So immediately I'm like, is fucking Dick Grayson a fucking counselor? No. What I can only imagine is it's the child of dick and barbara because we do see yes. like in the background we get it's awesome dude we get these like little um photographs yeah. hanging on the wall we obviously that's commissioner gordon in the past and so you know which would like, make her make him her grandfather right yeah in a in a sense yes so yeah. she's like you know what do you think about your diagnosis has the memory loss got any worse <laughs> it's how the hell would i know you know, and she's so she gives him this journal to kind of you know fill with his memories while you still have them. He's getting wheeled back to the room. Dude, I'll tell you, it's just so funny. They finally figure out what's wrong with these. Like, yeah, too sexy. <laughs> and just for that, you get a jello cup. It's like, I don't need your pity jello. And like, I can just imagine this cranky ass fucking Bruce Wayne, but he's like these little jokes that he's like spewing out. Like, and I, I like that you're mentioning this because, like, you know. People often criticize that, like Black Label specifically, is is doing a lot of different Batman books, and you know that very well may be true. But this is also a very unique interpretation of Bruce and of Batman. Like you know, this is like a, a new characterization. You know, Mark Mark Russell is writing a, a a Bruce Wayne that we don't really see. He's making him his own. Like this is yeah. a different Bruce Wayne that we're used to seeing. You know, born in a different era. You know, like obviously a product of his time it, it's good writing and it's making the character feel fresh which is the whole point of all these black label books i think you know well, this, this isn't black label though it isn't no i know i did that too i got like halfway through the issue and i flipped and i was like was this black oh label? my bad dude i don't yeah. know why i thought it was but yeah and that's what's crazy is they did it without doing it under the black label umbrella they did label it elseworlds like it's its own kind of thing like just existing you know which i did was that was Space Age the same way? Yeah, Space Age was the same way, I think. Okay, cool, yeah. man. But that, but I mean, my, my point, I think, still stands is that he's yeah. making... Yeah, just a lot of Batman movie. books. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's the point, too, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he makes him he makes him his own. You know, this is a... Mm -hmm. a if we're going to have unique books like this, then I'm all for more Batman books. Same. And I think I've said that, too, like, with some of, with some of the more recent Black Label books, where I'm like, fuck, another yeah. one. But then they they're really good, and they... Have, you know they're very unique and that's what you have to do if you're going to do this like out of continuity stuff make it something unique don't just make it like r-rated to be r-rated or just like right or shock or anything you know so i love that he's like you know he's sitting there he's about to write in his journal you get a little bit of like these photographs of his justice league time which to me is kind of weird like so do they know he's batman like that that kind of like went through my head um because it's his memory board obviously you can see uh for some reason, the word trolley is on there. I wonder if that yeah. has anything to do with anything. And then uh, there's this obviously maybe a scan of his brain, uh, a marriage to a cat woman, and obviously a photo with Alfred. And I think I've mentioned how much I miss Alfred in comics. This is a way different Alfred, though, that we get. 
And then we flash well, back to when he's a kid. And you get all these little Easter eggs, dude. You get these old Batmobiles. You get the clown this, met. this he's reading the Grey Ghost, which is from the Batman animated series. I love that little that little Easter egg. That made me smile so much. Yeah. And what's nuts is the origin is completely different. So we're gonna see that his parents are about to go watch the Zorro film, and he's not coming. He's staying home. Yeah. And you know, he talk, you know, you have the narration of Bruce talking about his dad and you know, all the stuff he learned from him. Then we get the killing of his parents, which is like more of an execution style. Which is I love the design of the faceless the society faceless, too. Yes, me too. I really love the angle that we're looking at this at. This yeah. upward angle sh going up is fucking awesome. And the light from the marquee, like shining down on yeah. them, you kind of see the beams of light. It's the it's lighting a really effect. Cool effect. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. Dope. So yeah, look. I mean, it even says it. The victims of a gangland murder unsolvable apparently because the killers wore masks and then we come back to wayne enterprises and you know you while well, you would think lucius fox is going to take over it's not mr sianis who if you know anything about batman that's the black mask yeah you know, that's his alter ego now we don't see him in here um but he basically takes it from lucius and they put somebody else in the seat of being the president which we don't even learn till the last page, which uh, just blew my mind. You know, they're talking about building the city of tomorrow. And that's where, you know, Thomas Wayne, his heart was. And they got to get away from that. They basically don't think it's worth pursuing. And that's something yeah. Lucius was always a part of was all this like technology. And that's how, you know, Bruce Wayne was able to take that. He's not going to become president until 18. So eventually, like people are going to try to fucking kill him, dude. Like they're going to. He's yeah, gonna have, have assassins going after him, and it's funny that everybody in that room at Wayne Enterprises is part of the faceless, uh, false face society. I love this line where you know Lucius is talking to Alfred, and he's like, you know, is there anything I can do to help? He's like, yeah, get him to eighteen, and that's just, <laughs> yeah, that's just so telling of like what we're gonna see, and what and Lucius up. knows what the hell is, is going on too, you know, like, and then they this this page is like this close up of the face. I wonder, like, if that means something. Like, why, why go so close? Like, why Buckingham? I say I would be king. Like, is this foretelling something? I don't know. It just seemed like an odd thing to close in on. And I, I'm not super familiar with Richard the Third as as a as a play, so I'm wondering if thematically that might. I mean, I know he's supposed to be like an awful character and like an awful ruler, so yeah maybe that's you know maybe that there's thematically something going on but i would i would be lying if i said i, I knew richard yeah III. I, I don't either <laughs> and then we come back to wayne manor this is where you know we see that, that we think there's an assassin coming we got alfred at the window with his shotgun ready and tells bruce yeah. to go down into what an unfinished crypt under the house yeah. like that's what it is it's not like a cave so he goes down and we get this awesome page of, of Bruce, a young Bruce with all these like bats flying around. Again, that same lighting effect that we had on the marquee splash page too, where you can kind of like, you know, see a, the beams of light sort of, you know, like if you look uh -huh. closely. <laughs> we find out the assassin was just a gardener. So Alfred had yeah. this like mock dummy. It's fucking so funny. There's still moments of like levity and like dark humor too, which I like, yeah. you know, and, and that's Mark Russell. I mean, he, like you said earlier, like, we were talking about like laughing in comics. It's like not easy. Mark, Mark Russell has been able to do it a couple of times, you know, when I've read his books, he, he really knows how to make you chuckle too. Yeah. But that doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, like as we're going to start to see, like this is a very traumatized Bruce Wayne, another side of him. We never really see like the, the acting up kid, you know, which yeah, I really that's like the thing seeing. is we don't see the Bruce that like wants to go fight for vengeance and fight crime. Instead, we see like what a normal kid, would do in this instance where his parents have died like he's lashing out he's rebellious he's constantly fucking breaking the law he fucking breaks into a zoo he's just chilling yeah. out with the fucking tiger drinking you know yeah, like, he's self-destructive you know yeah and then the cops take him and he's just like eating a fucking burger comes back into the house and laid out dude he, look at that. I love that. When they did haul me and I made sure they found a $50 bill tucked in my shirt pocket and then they took me home the crooked cops of Gotham, you know, all it takes is a little money. I love this too. As he goes to the courtroom, you get this public defender and he's like not ready for the case. And there's just an army of lawyers behind Bruce. 
the cockiness he, of the way he's sitting with his arms crossed. His legs. is he holding a newspaper or a comic book? I can't tell. It looks to me like it might Look, be. It's a, a crossword book. puzzle. Yeah, yeah. I like uh, that he's wearing Converse too. Yeah, I like that. I like that little touch. And then he's yeah. now again back on the. He says back on the streets, and he'll be under arrest again soon after that. And he's sitting there, and he meets Selena. I love she's wearing this like kind of like beatnik hat. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense for her character that she would be that, you know, yeah. like 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 something from like the Mod Squad or something, you know, like that's the outfit yeah. that she's wearing. And so he like has this interaction with her, and he he's kind of bragging how like I've never been inside of a jail cell. My butler will have me out of here in three minutes, and he'll bring donuts. And she calls him a fucking man child. And you know she's, she's like, putting him I... in his place. You know, yeah, she's like, where I come from, a night in jail isn't a cry for help. It's what keeps you from ever being able to buy a house. And so he offers to like you know, take care of her bail, and she's like, no, nah, I'm good. And then as he's, like, seeing Alfred come in, she, you see that she fucking escaped from the handcuff. I love that, dude. Walking the streets, walking the hood, and got, yeah. like, got this car up on cinder blocks. It's just, like, just a little bit grimier than what we've been seeing. Goes up into this coffee shop. This fucking guy behind the bar, dude. This fucking, this fucking flip-flops on, dude. And I believe that that comedian he's watching is Lenny Bruce. That I did not pick up on. Yeah. He's drawn to look like an Lenny Bruce. You know, Lenny Bruce is like, you know, one of the first comedians that really started sort of like, he kind of shifted comedy into being like what, instead of just zingers and one-liners and jokes into being like that sort of like social commentary that, that it is today. This is why I and love he, doing these episodes with somebody because like I would not have, I wouldn't even have yeah. known that. I, and I do like where the, the comedy act goes. But what's funny is when he comes up, he's like, you know, can I make a call? And uh, he's like, actually, it's for you. And Alfred's like, all right, he's now the owner of this coffee shop. I'll, I'll send you the copy of the title. So he basically so he can stay. And then again, we get that lighting effect. Yeah, like, dude, like, it's hey, all everybody. over the place. It's great. Yeah. And so he's telling all these like jokes and everybody's laughing. And then he starts hitting them with the, you know, the political commentary. Like you say, like. Every time you pay a church company or government that's screwing half the world, every time you waste your love on some flag or civil, couldn't possibly love you back. I mean, say what you will about my friend. At least he knows what he is. And the only person that laughs is Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, because Lenny, Lenny Bruce was, like, uh, you know, arrested for obscenity and stuff like that. And, like, you know, he was being a, a subversive and a communist and all these things because, you know, his comedy, you know, was hard-hitting. And I... And Mark Russell, you know, part, part of the point with this series, I think, is to sort of put real world history alongside what, what's going on. With yeah, Batman. that's that's what he did yeah. in Superman Space Age, too. A ton yeah. of it. So that that was that was me. And as a comedy fan, I love seeing that, you know. And then he, you know, I love this like conversation he has with Bruce. I don't need to read it all. I don't want to spoil every single line in this book, but it's a great interaction. I do I do want to point out the way he, like when Lenny Bruce is talking about the doctors, the way that Al, Alred uh, draws the doctors, like how they look very, like compared to the other characters, they don't look like people. You notice like they're very expressionless, like simple eyes, like, yeah, like it's emphasizing how like, Just you know, pin, it's really pinpoints for the eyeballs. Yeah. 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 Very subtle, but very effective, man, which is mm -hmm. one of the things that Alred does. And then uh, come back to Wayne Enterprises, man. And they're starting to question, where is this new president of ours? You know, we're going to have a new one any day now. You know, it's going to be some 18-year-old kid. Little does Bruce know what's about to happen to him next. And this is where things really take a fucking sharp turn in, you know, like the Batman origin stories. Because, like, he kind of tells Alfred off as, as he's leaving and he calls him to help. And yeah, you know, he what an says, asshole. I know he even says, I hated myself for saying it that in the moment the words came out of my mouth. And you know, he sees somebody being robbed. We can see, obviously, even though the shadows cast over her, we can see it's Selena. And this dude's just like being a creep on her, pulls out a knife against Bruce. And then we see that it was all part of the fucking plan that they were setting him up to get robbed. And Selena says, Just stay down, donut. It'll be over in a second. And then the police come and he got stopped by the wrong cop, dude. Yeah. One cop in Gotham that's not crooked. And he even said, I love like, it. there's a big misunderstanding. There's a note in my pocket that can clear this all up. And you can see the 50 poking out. And nope, he's got to go straight to the courthouse. But this time, this is how 
the people at Wayne Enterprises get back at him. This is how they end it for him. They don't yeah. allow him to get the lawyers involved. And he's 18 now, so he can go to prison. We see the, you know, finally this cocky little kid, this rebellious fucking teenager. He doesn't look so fucking cocky now as he's getting fucking hauled off to jail. This fucking guy, this his face reminds me of an actor. It looks like Peter Laurie. He's like an old actor that used to do like like weird roles in horror movies in the forties and fifties. Okay. But this is such a great scene of him getting hauled off. And then, you know, uh, I'm going to spoil the last page. So if you don't want to see the last page, who's running when Enterprises, uh, you guys should skip. But now we see it's fucking Pariah, dude. Yeah. Fucking Pariah. And then look at, I mean, that's how he's able to continue to make all this fucking money for them. It's because he knows the future. He's like, oh, yeah, he can tell you the projections to the remainder of the century. He's like, no, up to 1985 will do. Which to me, means that that's what the next chapter is going to be. It's going to lead us into 1985. Yeah, which is, I mean, would make Bruce probably already Batman at that point, you know? Yeah. I love this page, too, of him in the jail cell, you know, half in his fucking jail jumpsuit and then half in the Batman costume. We got the vines, which, you know, leads you to believe that's poison ivy. We see the hole in the jail cell. So, very fun issue. Um, I was kind of shocked when I found out this week that it's going to be a six-issue miniseries as opposed to the three issues that they did for Superman Space Age. But I'm super stoked for this. I can't wait for the next issue. And uh, hit up your comic shop and go pick this up. And while you're at it, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, we're out.